Let's welcome Aiden on stage. Oh, I'm so sorry, Kendall. I'm sorry, guys. That is definitely not a good example of smartphone use. But that's what I'm going to talk about for today. I'm Aiden, and I'm going to talk about smartphone use. Next slide, please. A smartphone is basically a small computer. You could call, text, or share almost anything to just about anyone you want. You could also search for information or play games. You can even transform it into a game board or use it as an education tool. The possibilities are endless. Next slide, please. In this slide, we see lots of figures. This part of the chart is very interesting. 96% of people use their smartphones at home, although I think 100% of people might use their smartphones at toilets, just saying. But, as you can see, a quarter of smartphone users use their smartphones at school. Do you use your smartphones at school? We could also see that smartphones are topping the sales of computers and the medium of accessing breaking news, just to, a, to show the popularity of smartphones. Next slide, please. I would like to first talk about the pros of smartphones. First of all, they're small light, and powerful, so you can take them almost anywhere. Second, you could add notes. It's like what I'm doing here. Calendars, check the clock, search the web, and even receive new notifications and emails. All of these aforementioned features help increase productivity. In fact, a recent survey of users from 34 countries showed that 62% of them believed that their work productivity was increased due to their smartphones. It could also serve as a flashlight, a camera, a socializing tool, a GPS device, a music player, and even a video editor. For example, I use my smartphone to edit my YouTube videos. The amazing thing is that all of these features are packed in such a small device. Next slide, please. Although I love smartphones as much as the next person, it is difficult to deny that they also have some unpleasant and dangerous effects on people. For instance, the fact that mobile phone radiation can cause headaches, insomnia, and confusion, in addition to damaging your eyes. Or the fact that it serves as a distraction and can make individuals unable to focus. Or in extreme cases, ruin relationships. Some even claim that it can become addicting to using it so often and make life difficult for some without it. Next slide, please. Smartphones cannot be categorized exactly as fully good or bad. If you can control yourself from excessive use, then it may have positive results for you. But if you can't, then you should start fighting yourself against it or get some help. Smartphones can make your life easier or harder but it's up to you to decide which is the case. Thank you for listening. Actually, Aiden's gonna stay on stage because the judges are gonna ask our EF levels um, contestants questions. And the first question uh, is gonna be Shannon. Oh, it's... Hi, Aiden. First question is, or request, is share with us how you chose your position with regards to the usage of smartphones. Okay, while researching this topic, I found out that nothing in life has an, uh, has an entirely positive or negative side. You just have to find it yourself, and especially smartphone use. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of pros and also cons of smartphone use. And because of that, I chose my position as middle ground. Thank you. Very good. And the next question is, what suggestions would you give to a presenter who's very nervous on stage? Thank you. Uh, I've heard many people say that if you're nervous, just pretend the audiences are a bunch of watermelon heads or something. <laughs> but I don't think that's the case. I think that you should first look at your audience, see if they are understanding your speech, if they are even interested, 
Are they even paying attention to you? If you don't, if they don't, then I would, my suggestion would be to have a connection with the audience. For example, to ask a question that they can relate to. Or if they give them, if they gave you feedback, that means you have succeeded. Or another hand is keeping the audience's interest in mind. Because of, because of you connecting to the audience, you might feel a bit more confident and a bit less nervous. Thank you. Thank you. One more question. What, Aiden, is the most valuable thing you learned from speaking in front of an audience and why? Okay. Well, I am fortunate enough to be part of several speeches and presentations of Head Start. And I gotta say that speaking in front of like this, a large audience, is really not that bad. For example, nobody's going to come and beat you up if you give a bad presentation, right? You just have to try better next time. And I believe that if I keep improving, I can become a greater speaker. And most importantly, I want to challenge my former self and become the best speaker in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Aiden. You're pretty close, you're pretty close. And that leaves our first place winner for the EF level is Aiden. Thank you. Wow, three excellent speakers. Let's take a group photo together. Okay. Very good. Congratulations. First of all, they're small, light, and powerful. 